Hello, here are my paste papers for my last video. I already started using them and I'm gonna share what I've been using them for at the end of the video, so stick around. For now, I'd like to share with you what my paste paper mixture looked like after storing it for a day in the refrigerator. It was clearly a bad idea because as you can see, this is not an ideal consistency for making paste paper, but Fast forward a couple of days and I did get a blender. So I did make another batch of that paste paper mixture and it did end up being much smoother and a lot thinner too, interestingly. So here it is, you can see how much different it ended up being. And here it is with some paint mixed in. So very much smoother. But for now, I'm going to get that old mixture back out, old as in one day old, and see what happens when I use it again for some more paste paper. So I'm gonna mix some new colors and I'm going to add some of that crazy mixture into it just to see what happens for the sake of experimentation. So it looks pretty nasty, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and try it out. So for now, enjoy the pattern making and then stick around at the end. I'll share with you all of the finished papers once they're dry. All right, so up next, I have the finished dried paste papers that I'll share with you. And I was a little bit worried about the clumps that were in the mixture, but as you can see, as I flip through these, that really the clumps didn't really make that big of a difference in the overall effect. The colored paste ended up drying really pretty smoothly on the paper and the paper is quite flexible which is great because there are lots of different things that you can do with these. In just a second I'm going to share with you what I've been using these for and if you've been following me for a while you probably have a guess. Yep, I've been using the paste paper to make notebooks. Here's one of my little Coptic stitch notebooks. And I was curious to see how the paste paper would behave as I glued it to the book board and wrapped it around the edges. And it worked really well, so I was really happy about that. Here's another one, that purple one, which I really like that color. And I used it for the outside of 
outside covers as well as the inside. And I also made some mini jotter notebooks with my chain stitch. And I wanted to just see how the paper would behave as just a paper cover. And it also works really well. If you do want to learn the chain stitch, I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel. Speaking of the chain stitch, I made this larger notebook with some more of my paste paper. This is that vellum kind of paper. This is a little bit thinner, um, but it still worked pretty well. And I got a little bit fancier with the closure and everything on this one. And I also added this extra paper to the, um, the right here to the bound side, the spine side, just for a little bit of extra structure so that the paper didn't rip where I was stitching. I really hope this video gave you some ideas of more patterns that you can create with paste paper and what you can use your paste paper for. Next week's video, I'm going to share more of a tutorial of how to make a notebook like this one. I used a variety of fun different kinds of papers for the inside and some more of my paste paper for the cover with this fancy closure. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and click subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks!